and welcome to Jubilee Road. So for the first time I've actually had a chance to put two A4s head to head. One is made by Bachmann and one is made by Hornby. That is what we're going to be doing in today's video. Now I've never owned or had a Bachmann A4 here at the layout. My friend uh, Nathan has lent me quite a few LNER locomotives uh, over the last uh, week or so for the next big event and I thought this would be a nice addition to the lineup here on the channel to basically show you which is the better one. Now my opinion might be completely different to yours but in today's video I am going to take a sort of closer look at the details and the way you, each one's sort of looks. Uh, do a little comparison and then give them a run around the layout. We are not going to be looking at running quality today because the two models in front of you run absolutely flawlessly. They do. They're quiet, they're pretty powerful, they're smooth running, so we don't really need to look at that today. We are looking more of the way the locomotives look and the models and the details that they have. Now you might be able to tell in front of you which one is the back one and which one is the Hornby one. You might be able to tell there. So first things first, let's have a look at each one quickly at closer detail to see what they generally do look like. Let's, let's, let's take a look. We're going to have a look at this locomotive first, which is Dwight D. Eisenhower. A lot of you probably did notice this is the Bachmann model. Uh, so we're going to have a quick look and see what this is like. First impressions, it's a really good looking model. The paintwork is done to a really high standard, as you can see, with the nice red lining. you got the nameplate there, which is really nice. It kind of looks like an etch plate. It possibly is. Now the valve gear here and the wheels really do look nice on this model. Uh, the, they painted the wheels really nice and the, just, as I said the valve gear just looks really smart on this model. We continue back we do have the number there and a maker's plate. Again printed really good with the lining as well around the cab area. The tender there, yeah again lining's done really well. The British Rail logo's looking nice. We do have some cab detail in there but it's not quite up to sort of today's standards I suppose you could say but to me I'm not bothered by that because you're never gonna see that cab detail especially if you run the locos as much as I do. Uh, overall I think this is a really nice looking model but there is an issue I'm sure few of you are aware of this is this the streamlined front the angle is wrong, believe it or not. Hmm, it doesn't look really bad, but it definitely is not accurate to the A4 itself, which is a little bit of a shame. But overall, as I said, a really good looking model. Let's see if the Hornby one can stack up. Let's go and have a look at that in more detail. And here is the Hornby model. Uh, I forgot to say guys I am doing this freehand like I just did with the uh, back model so that's why it might be well a little bit lumpy and bumpy but here is the Hornby model and you can see the overall shape I think is captured a lot better here with the Hornby model if we just take a closer look again yeah it's a fab looking model but as you can see that angle is far more accurate in my opinion Red linings done really well. I don't think the wheels and valve gear look quite as nice to me on the Hornby model. Got the number then printed again really well. The tender, well, it's virtually exactly the same as the other one. There's pretty much uh, hardly any differences between them. Uh, the Hornby model, as you can see, does have that little bit more detail around. Uh, obviously, it is a slightly later model than the Bachmann version. Um, but there is a problem with this locomotive as well. Any ideas what it is? It's the classic Hornby problem. Is the livery. In my opinion the livery is garbage on this. Look at that green. That is so washed out, dull and flat. To me it completely ruins this model. Well that's it, it ruins the model because 
the lining and everything is done to a fab high standard but that green just makes this model look so cheap and nasty i i don't know why hornby did this and the problem is they still do bit of a shame so let's go and look at them side by side and then let's get them running around the layout there we are we had a look at the locomotives uh in closer detail um so which one do you prefer let me know in the comment sections which do you think you know everyone's obviously going to have a different opinion to me possibly some might prefer the hornby some might prefer the back one that's completely fine it's your preference um now they're together again you should be able to tell the difference between the paint as you can see the back ones here it might not look so obvious on camera and the hornby ones here the the shade of green it just looks so much nicer and makes this loco look much more of a quality object than this this one just looks a bit too i i'm gonna say cheap but yeah that's my opinion and i'm sorry guys if you don't like that they're not bad models the pair of them, there's, you can't say they're absolute rubbish models. The pair of them are way beyond that. They are really nice uh, looking locomotives. And I'm going to say it again. It's just that paintwork on the Hornby one I hate. And the problem is, Hornby is still doing it today. That's why you never see me buy a green steam locomotive from Hornby. I just refuse to do it. Well, the BR green anyway, because it just looks so cheap and horrible. Sorry, Hornby, that's my opinion. You should really sort it out by now. So, that is the end of this part of the video. As I said, let me know in the comment sections which one you prefer. I'm now going to leave you with the pair of them running around here at Jubilee Road with a couple of coaches and at high speeds, because that's what an A4 should be doing. I'll be back here at Jubilee Road or on location very soon. Bye, everyone.